All right, boys and girls, teachers and students, welcome back to another installment of Julian's Random Projects. Uh, recently, TID Radio, which is how you're supposed to pronounce that, TID Radio. That kind of reminds me of the um, Nokia versus Nokia or Ryobi versus Ryobi. It's Ryobi as in Recycle. This company pronounces it TID Radio. Uh, they reached out and asked me if I'd be willing to review some of their products, and I said no initially. <laughs> um, but then I was doing that series of uh, videos about USB C and moving, you know, USB C all the things basically. Uh, so I reached back out and said, hey, if you have a USB product that's coming out, I'd be happy to review that. Uh, and it, it came a little bit later than that last video we did with the flashlight, but. Um, this one came in and this is the TD Tango Delta dash H8 or Hotel 8. Per usual, there'll be shill links down in the description so you can get the exact make and model from Amazon. There's a couple different flavors for this. There's like an export unlimited firmware. There's a ham uh, amateur radio version and there's a GMRS one. And my understanding is that the, the gubbins, the, the guts in this thing haven't changed across that series uh, or all those. It's just the firmware that enables it to use different filtering or, uh, you know, obviously enable uh, inhibiting TX on certain frequencies or frequency ranges. This was sent to me, I think in the, the ham firmware, but a simple like Vulcan death grip, which I think is PTT. And then these three buttons here, uh, as you power it on, allows you to cycle through uh, you know, different different sets. And I, I'll demo that here in a moment, but I'm, I, I fear it might blow away some of my uh, frequencies that I've got set up in here uh, to do some basic testing. So there was an earlier version of this. Those have almost been completely purged from the market. Um, and so they're onto a second gen because there were complaints, uh, which is why I grabbed a, a, a um, little spectrum analyzer. I've got the larger one over here, uh, but this one doesn't have like a locking marker. I have to um, set a center frequency and then I can, I can observe the harmonics, but this was this older test set that I have for Motorola doesn't actually like give me a lot of like information about that second peak. I just have to look at, you know, lines on a graph and then kind of guesstimate it. But this one should actually let us observe the exact um, harmonics on it. So I've been doing a, a bit of testing with it. It's, it's your standard HT folks. It's, uh, it's nice, it's rugged. But the main killer app here, the, like the killer feature, is that it's got that USB-C charging on it. Uh, of course, it comes with a charger and, a, and all the cables and belt clips and little lanyards and all that stuff. Um, but this is the reason you're getting it. And so as best I can tell from looking at some of the other reviews is that uh, if you've got uh, this model or similar ones from TID Radio, the... Um, the batteries are compatible, that they didn't change where the index uh, happens or the uh, polarity here. So if you've got a radio already and they weren't doing USB-C, you might be able to find just this USB-C enabled battery pack and uh, you'd be right in business. Also, uh, is it not a Rubicon was saying that this, this was a little challenging to get without a tool. Mine doesn't seem to be that tight. Um, I don't know. Um, I mean, it's, I, I tell you the, my, the first time going after it with my, my index finger, I thought to myself, eh, you know, that is a bit much. And so I, I grabbed with an inanimate object and, um, got that to pop down. So, but I think it's kind of worked its way in or like, uh, the metal or the metal, <laughs> the plastic has sort of conformed or maybe rounded off and it's a lot easier now. Uh, so I did some range testing. I won't bore you with some of that. Uh, I want to get to the, the harmonics on it and it's, it's very typical, uh, you know, any, anywhere from a few miles in, in and around the homestead here. And I, I often, when I get these things, I switch out to, there's one of my stubby bobs. Here we go. Um, I get these guys and it's nice to know that it fits. That's also not a given with some of these uh, Chinese HTs or just any HT really uh, is the, the clearance around here. Some of them have like a shoulder to protect it or that comes up over here and you know protects the, the volume knob. Uh, I've, I have another one, one of the, well, I've got another HT that these won't fit. The, this outer ring, which is nice because it gives you a good purchase, um, is too, uh, the diameter is a little too wide and it hits the plastic and I have I don't like that radio enough where I need to modify it, so I just don't use that one too often. But uh, around the homestead here, having a short little stubby antenna like this, it's, it's, it's awesome. It works for, you know, I don't know, maybe a mile or so, you know, three quarter a mile. And for our 10 acre plot of land, which is long and like rectangular, 
it's perfectly fine for that. If you need a little bit more range, maybe the stock antenna. And then if you needed even more range, uh, you can get yourself one of these uh, 771s. And there's a lot of different versions of this. Just find something that's got some good reviews or to get the one that TID Radio sells. They've got their own little uh, Nagoya clone here. This thing, boy, howdy, this one gets out. If you know how to hold an, an HT and you get this thing going or you go the extra step and do a counterpoise, a little pigtail that comes off here, uh, these longer ones really do, uh, you know, do get out. And it becomes less about how many watts of power you're putting out and it, it becomes more about like your antenna setup. So, all right, on to the, the main event. I've, I've tested power out. Um, we can do that briefly. It's, it's pretty normal. Um, I think it's like seven, eight watts, something like that. Um, and of course, all these different meters, these are just, you know, homebrew kind of meters, uh, not like the ex more expensive uh, test set that I've got over here. Um, they don't agree with each other perfectly, but also, you know, this is all just uh, inexpensive stuff from the Sweet Rock Candy Mountain we call China. So um, we're just, you know, doing comparable deltas here. Because is it between low, medium, high? Maybe it's like, you know, one, three, and six on this thing, and it's two, four, and eight on a different uh, piece of equipment. Uh, it's just, you know, your, your watt meter may vary, so... Welcome. Yeah, it's got the cool guy. Voice seems to be improved in this version of the firmware. Pretty decent. So uh, maybe I just can see that guy. There we go. Some of that auto going on. All right. So that's negative 10 dB there through an attenuator, of course. Um, and then that very next harmonic is way down here. Um, you know, negative negative 60 something, you know, something like that. So uh, well within spec, and I trust that some of the harmonics out after that are probably gonna get, uh, you know, even smaller and smaller. So um, there we go, discontinued transmitting. And the, the, the texture of this thing kind of reminds me of uh, some of the metal HTs that I've got, where they've got a kind of a, I can't remember, the, I don't know if it's parkerized or like there's a there's a name for this texture uh, that they're, they're definitely going for. Uh, it's got a bit of a, some heft to it, but it's still just, you know, it's, it's a plastic radio. Um, and the other killer feature with this one, which I've already used, is the Bluetooth. And if you've got, I have a kind of a burner phone that I use uh, when I'm putting on questionable apps of unknown origin um and it, that new app that they have that they recommend you use uh, i don't even think it's theirs it's just like a, a third party uh similar to chirp radio you can also program this with chirp uh, i've used that as well uh recently because I, I like the copy and paste drag and drop kind of method there instead of like scrolling like you do for the phone yeah the app's uh called od master all right and you can get in and connect to your your actual device without uh, providing any other uh, information, which is nice. It's not the most intuitive, but you can at least read from the radio and you know change settings really quickly and then pop back out. You don't have to get a dongle or connect to something or um, you, know, you know break out this monstrosity and, and try and like load drivers and all that jazz. So that's improved upon, which is nice. And of course, it's Bluetooth for the comms. So that's the you know the, the serial you know baud rate. RS-232 type communications. Uh, that's the, the thing it's doing over Bluetooth. Not Bluetooth like you have in some radios where I, this one in particular, I can connect a Bluetooth headset and listen to the audio um, over Bluetooth. So th that's not the Bluetooth they're talking about here, although it's the same standard. Here we're using Bluetooth for data on the TID radio. Got two more things I wanted to show you guys. Um, one was the Vulcan Death Grip, which I believe is PTT and one, one of these three lower right-hand buttons. So you press those two and you power it on and it initial locks this. So you can unlock it or not unlock it, or you can change that mode. And the next one is zero and PTT turning on. Here's saying it'll set up for GMRS. And then lastly, I think it's this asterisk or scan button. And there we can set it up as a, a ham radio. So uh, that should TX inhibit on things that you're not supposed to be messing around with as a ham. Or if you only have a ham license and not a GMRS, same thing. You can't be over there transmitting on GMRS like, uh, on frequencies. So you'd have to get both if you want to play those reindeer games. And the second thing I'm going to recommend in my pursuit to USB-C all the things is get yourself like 100. I think this is like 200. And these are pennies a piece. And all they are is little dust covers. And so 
since this one is exposed, some other manufacturers have been hiding the USB-C underneath this flap. And although that's convenient for um, ingress uh, of dust and stuff, I end up having this living hinge break on me on a lot of different models that I've got around here. And the although it's still nice, I can get the, get to it and get USB-C. Once that breaks off, the USB-C and the uh, the Kenwood connections are exposed to moisture and dust and dirt, and so it's not ideal. Um, this one's nice because it looks like it's uh, serviceable. You can swap it out. I recommend getting the pennies. <laughs> Penny's worth of an investment here and find yourself a USB-C dust cover. And there you go. Pretty convenient. And you're going to lose it. That's why you buy 200 of them. These are going to get lost. So just sprinkle them in and around your charging station and you should be good to go. Um, so that's how I'll be rocking this thing. And I tried to do um, a longevity test on the, uh, the, the receive and it was going into days, guys. And I, I got bored and <laughs> I got to make this YouTube video. Days and days of receive. Of course, you're, if you're long-winded and you're on here keying up all the time or you're doing all these different modes and things uh this might go down also the backlight is uh cost you something um i i, I just re realized we didn't do a power out let me do that real quick all right let's see so there's low one and a half let's see menu and there's high power yeah seven watts um i think this thing is being sold as a 10 watt radio uh maybe an eight watt radio depending on um the, the listing but you're you're in that ballpark there. We can also do we can do some receive sensitivity here. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. There you go. Yeah, you can kind of get the squelch trying to kick in there. Um, this. This particular uh, knob, I've got to get in there and throw some deoxid down there. Um, one of the steps is not working properly, but um, yeah, that's pretty decent uh, receive there as well. So final thoughts. Uh, it's a keeper for sure. I'll probably be getting another pair. I've, I've already got some other decent 10 watt uh, HTs that I've bought in the past from TID Radio and they've been working a treat. Uh, the color screen's kind of nice. Um, one of the things I'm gonna do is put a little bit of MNU on this led up here it's that little flash to let you know that you're still in receive mode and that the radio's on when i'm driving around especially it just keeps catching my eye like right out of the corner of my eye and i i, I have a tendency to want to like glance over and look at it so it can be a bit distracting um in that regard but you know again we're, we're splitting hairs here a little stuff um, all the buttons are programmable inside of chirp and also the other um over the over bluetooth with the uh, ios or android app um, you can reprogram that button. I always reprogram this to be something like FM radio or something more useful than an alarm. Uh, one, no one's coming to your aid if you got if you press that thing and the thing starts squawking. It actually like transmits the alarm sound on the uh, the frequency that you're using, and it's uh, there's very few use cases for that, and it's very obnoxious. So um, it, to keep people from inadvertently pressing that and getting that result, I usually switch it over to be like the FM um, radio button sometimes think so uh, you can program in weather channels all that stuff it's got a bunch of uh you know i think it's got like you know 999 channels and of course your uh your ubiquitous led flashlight uh to get around you'd be surprised how often you'd use that little stinker <laughs> um when you're when you're out and about you're taking out the trash or something like that or you're running an errand on the the homestead here and you don't have a proper flashlight just having something like that to you know get into the well house and flip on the main lights um is pretty useful so it's it's a keep for me it's a buy for me and i hope you guys enjoyed this quick review of the tid td h8 73. I'm hanging in, there ain't no doubt, and I'm hanging tough, over and out, over and out.